Hi there, I'm Jason Foley. I'm a macro landscape and astral photographer. I created this video as a response to a post that I shared online. Now, just yesterday I became a member of a Facebook group that was created for users of a very specific lens, the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter contemporary lens. I would say that it's best known for wildlife photography, but in my case, I use it more than anything for astrophotography. Now, this was my first post to this group, and I wanted to bring something a little bit different in sharing my personal experience using the lens. So I shared three photos. The first photo was of my equipment setup, the camera, the lens, and the various astrophotography equipment that I use. The second and third photos were of targets that I successfully captured using this setup. One was the Andromeda Galaxy, and the other one was the Orion Nebula. And the engagement that came back from this uh, group was phenomenal. Lots of questions about the gear, the, the technique used in capturing the images, and there was even a couple of requests for a video where I would walk through all of the different equipment that I use. And I thought, what a great idea. So here I am, and I've done just that. So please enjoy the video. If uh, there's anything that you want to know, any questions that you have, leave a comment below and I will respond. So here we go. Okay, so here is the setup that I'm going to go over. Now, I may jump around a little bit, but I will try to do this in a logical order and uh, I'll make sure that I go over all the equipment that you see here. Now, first off is the camera body. This is a Canon EOS R. It's a 30 megapixel mirrorless camera. This one is not Astro modified in any way. It's a stock EOS R. This is the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter contemporary lens. I have it extended at 600 mil, which is the focal length that I used in the images that I shared online. This is an EF mount lens. This is an RF mount camera. So I needed to use an adapter and I wanted to point that out. Canon supplies uh, three different adapter options for this camera body. And this one in particular is really useful for astrophotography. And I will circle back to that in a couple of minutes and explain why. So before I continue on, I just want to say that when I first started, this was my setup. I had the camera, I had the lens, and I had a tripod. I didn't have the tracker, I didn't have any of these other devices that you see here. Now, I was able to very successfully uh, capture images of the moon with this setup. It's great for lunar photography. And uh, it was only when I wanted to start capturing deep sky objects like Andromeda, Orion, or anything else, that I needed to do much, much longer exposures. And that's where the challenge lies. Um, when using a lens like this at 600 mil, I'm limited to about maybe a half second long exposure. And the reason for that is because of the Earth's rotational spin. The night sky is moving constantly overhead. And at a focal length like 600 millimeters, it's very quickly exaggerated. So at half second, uh, any, any longer than half a second, I would introduce star trails into my image. So that's where you need something like this. And this here is an equatorial mount. This is called the Sky Guider Pro. And its sole purpose is to match the, the Earth's rotational spin. So the camera, the lens, and everything else will move in tandem with the Earth's rotation. So that allows me now to shoot much longer exposures so that I get nice pinpoint stars in my images. And when I say longer exposures, I went from that, like I said, that half second scenario to 60 seconds, 120 seconds. Um, Andromeda was 60 and Orion was 120, oh, the, the one that I shared online. I was absolutely blown away by it. Now, it's a great device, but it's not perfect. Um, there's something called periodic error. I want to say that's what it's called. And inside this device, there's gears. And as those gears mesh together, they can actually bind a little bit. Even if it's only for a fraction of a second, it can actually throw off the tracking a little bit enough to introduce some star trailing into your long exposures. Now, there's a way to refine that process, and that's this device right here. This is called a guide scope. Now, it's, it's two parts. This here, think of it like a mini telescope, and this is the actual camera. And in the back of this uh, device here, there's a very small sensor at the, at the far end of it. It's literally, I think, a one or a two megapixel sensor. It's monochrome, it's not color. Its sole purpose is essentially to lock onto a star using software. And when it locks onto a star, it can detect any of those errors caused by the tracking mount and send a pulse signal to the mount to tell it to either 
speed up or slow down a little bit, essentially, to further refine the tracking process. Once you have, and this is called auto guiding, once you have that set up, I was able to go from a 60 second or 120 second exposure to three minute exposures, five minute exposures, and even longer. I've seen people go as long as 10 minute exposures. So that just, again, it allows you to capture that much more light in your exposures. And it also allows you to bring that ISO down a little bit, which further improves your image quality. So this was really the next evolution for me um, after the mount. And it just really improved the quality of what I was able to capture. All of this though, it needs to talk to something or it needs something to basically send it instructions on how to go about all this. And that's where software comes into play. Uh, there's quite a few different programs online that you can get that are, some of them are freeware, some are payware. And what most people do is they'll, they'll use a laptop, they'll install the software, and with all the right cables, they'll connect all these devices to the laptop and drive it all that way. Now, I want a bit of a different approach. Um, this device here is called an ASI Air. Now, essentially what this is, it's a mini computer. And if you've heard of Raspberry Pi, <laughs> Raspberry Pi is a type of hardware that is found in quite a few uh, like Android boxes and stuff like that. Um, that's what's essentially inside of this. And that software that I mentioned is pre-installed on this little device. Now, of course, I don't have a keyboard or a monitor with this. Uh, this works wirelessly with either a cell phone or a tablet. And uh, I can actually control everything remotely, which is fantastic. Now, this is not a powered device. This uh, actually needs an external power source to keep it going. So that leads me to the next item that I have here. This is called a Celestron power tank. It's essentially a small battery pack, and this will give me roughly 10 hours of use, so it's good for a couple of nights, and that is what powers the ASI Air Pro. Now, right behind it, you'll see another battery pack. I just have it Velcroed to the main post in the middle of the tripod here. Now, that cable goes back up to the lens. You may have noticed this when I was first looking at the lens. This band here is heated. It's actually called a dew heater. Now, when you're shooting astrophotography at night, the temperatures will drop, and it's not uncommon to have dew form on the front of your lens. And once dew forms on the front of your lens, uh, every image after that is more or less ruined. So this little heating element will keep the lens assembly just warm enough to keep dew from forming on the lens. Now, you may have also noticed a cable coming out of the bottom of my EOS R. I have a dummy battery um, plugged into the bottom of this. And I do a lot of my shooting in the backyard um, where I do have a power outlet not too far away. So for me, this was much better than running out of batteries in the middle of a session. And when you're shooting in cold temperatures, they do tend to drain a little bit quicker. And many photo sessions at night can be several hours long. So this really took that right out of the equation with an external power. What else can I show you? Okay, so if I come back around here to that filter, uh, sorry, the, uh, the adapter. The reason I like this particular model of the adapter, it has a filter hole in it. And it came with a variable ND filter, but I can remove that and replace it with this, which is a light pollution filter. This actually um, allows me to shoot here from my backyard in a very, very bright city, what's called a, a Bortle 8, maybe a Bortle 9 class, as far as uh, light pollution is concerned. Actually, you know, right here from my own backyard and get some really good images. Uh, so um, I didn't think for a moment that I'd be able to capture uh, star photo, you know, galaxies and stuff in my backyard, but that has allowed me to do it. So it was a great, uh, a great investment. Now down here, I have, I'll talk quickly about this, <laughs> this wooden tray. Um, it's actually dual purpose. It, yes, it gives me a little shelf to put things on, but it's attached to each of the tripod legs with very, very sturdy brackets. Um, a YouTuber that I follow was kind enough to share a link to um, this, this item that he found online. And I just bought all the parts and I just made it myself and uh, it's fantastic. And it really adds some weight to the tripod setup as well as structural rigidity. Now this here, this is called a Botanov mask. Somebody had asked me about how do you focus on stars using this particular lens? because it doesn't come with like an electronic focuser or any of the, some of the focusing aids that you see with dedicated astrophotography gear. So 
autofocus is of no use <laughs> with astrophotography. Um, when it comes to lenses like this, that's for sure. Uh, here's the manual focusing ring for the Sigma lens. And what you do is you place this mask over the end of your camera, uh, of the end of your lens, and you will use your manual focusing ring to try to focus on a star. And what this mask does is it'll create diffraction spikes. They're essentially little lines that go through the star that you have on the back of your screen here uh, when you're zoomed in at the 10 times magnification in the preview. And what you're looking for is a perfect, um, basically those lines to go right through the middle of the star. It creates a certain pattern. And as you adjust the manual focus ring, the lines will move either side to side or up and down. And you're trying to get them perfectly across the center of that star. And that's how you know you've achieved perfect focus. So. Batnov mask, it's essentially a piece of plastic, but it works incredibly well for achieving uh, perfect focus. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, just taking a quick walk around. Oh, the other, other thing is this here. I don't think I mentioned that. That is a red dot scope. And what I use that for is literally, it's just a finder scope to help me locate an area in the sky where uh, where I'm looking for a certain deep sky object. At 600 millimeters, it's really hard to find that on screen or just by looking through the eyepiece. But by looking at this red dot scope, it gets me in the general vicinity much, much quicker. And then I can refine my search from there. So I think that's it. And um, I'm sure I've left something out, but if you have any questions at all, please leave a comment below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much and happy shooting. Cheers. Bye-bye.